How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Today, I want to talk to you about... Oh, slow motion. Why did I just do that? Intro. Oh, that definitely feels like it's uh, smarting up a bit. Probably a little bit red there. All right, so anyway, I'm gonna go through this quickly and I'm gonna break it down into different stages. Now, the very first stage is figuring out actually what kind of frame rate do you need? Don't just automatically choose the fastest frame rate your camera can do, like this one can do 120 frames a second, because the higher the frame rate, the higher the shutter speed you will need. And so the more light you will need to expose your shot properly. So ask yourself if you really need that 120 frames per second. Ideally, when you're shooting 120 frames a second, you'd have your shutter speed somewhere around 1 over 250th of a second to make it look good. So that each frame has enough sharpness, but it's also got a little bit of natural motion blur going on. And in contrast to that, if you're shooting at 60 frames a second, all you need is an exposure of 1 over 1 20th of a second which is a lot slower than one over 250th. So you'll be letting a lot more light into your camera, which means you will need a lot less ISO, which results in cleaner images. So figure out what frame rate you actually need before you start shooting. Okay, the second thing to figure out is what zone you're in and what zone you're shooting in, what zone your camera is set up to shoot in. Now, usually speaking, nowadays, this really doesn't matter unless you're producing for television. The reason that NTSC and PAL are different is because the US and Europe operate on different electric systems. The US operates on a 60 hertz basis, the EU operates on a 50 hertz basis. And so NTSC is at a 60 hertz rate, whereas PAL is at a 50 hertz rate. What this means is that if your camera is set up in NTSC mode, you would get frame rates like 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second, 120 frames a second, multiples of 30. Whereas if you're in PAL, you would get 25 frames a second, 50 frames a second, 100 frames a second, multiples of 25, because 25 is half of 50, 50 hertz, 30 is half of 60, 60 hertz. Now, again, this doesn't really matter nowadays unless you're shooting for TV, but where it does matter is where you're using lights that aren't constant flicker-free lights, like for example, in a parking lot. If you're shooting in a parking lot and you can't turn off the lights and you can't control those lights and you're shooting in 120 frames a second and you're in the EU, you're gonna get flicker. There's nothing you can do about that because your camera's set up in the wrong zone. So what you'd need to do is set up your camera in PAL, shoot at 100 frames a second at 200th of a second frame rate. Frame rate? Shutter speed. God, this is all hard to say very quickly. And so essentially shooting at 100 frames a second, you will be in sync with the 50 hertz standard of the EU and you won't get that 10 hertz offset, which causes the flicker. And vice versa, if you're in the US, don't have your camera set up to PAL mode because you will also get the flicker. And that's pretty much it in terms of the advice for actually shooting the slow-mo. It's your frame rate, your shutter speed, and just judging what available lights you have and then choosing which zone you're in. That's, that's really the most important thing. After that, it's down to your style and how you want to shoot. So let's jump into the post-production side of stuff. You shot your footage, you've brought it onto your hard drives, you brought that into Premiere Pro, and you're ready to start editing. So what's probably the easiest method is to actually interpret that footage so that Premiere Pro will read the entire file at the desired frame rate that you're gonna be editing with. So if I wanna take this 120 frames a second clip, and interpret that to play back at 24 frames a second, which is what I want to edit in my timeline. Just select the clip or all of the clips that are 120 frames a second, right click, choose modify, interpret footage, and just enter the desired frame rate. Now, because these cameras aren't actually true 24 frames a second, you need to enter 23.976 frames a second and then bam, they're all slow-mo right out of the tin. Method number two, if you wanna keep your original frame rate, so 120 frames a second in this case, and you just wanna choose bits and pieces from it that you wanna slow down or just keep at their natural speed in your timeline, in your sequence, then just drag whatever you want into your sequence, make your edit, and then select your clip, hit Command-R or Control-R, and that'll bring up your speed window. And in there, you can change your selected clip to a specific speed or a specific length. So say I wanted the shot to play out at a one-to-one -one frame rate. So I've got 120 frames a second. I want it to play out at 24 frames a second. Now 24 is actually 20% of 120. So if you put 20% in the speed, it will actually play back your 120 frames a second clip at 24 frames a second. So you're getting a one-to-one -one playback ratio for your frames. Or you can set the desired length if you don't really care too much about having a one-to-one -one playback ratio. Say 
say you need that clip to last 12 seconds and it currently lasts three, just type in 12 seconds and you're good. All right, method three is basically the less precise version of method two, which instead of going Commander Control R, just hit R and drag the end or beginning of your clip, make it longer and it will actually extend the playback speed of that clip. So it will make it slower than it originally was or faster if you make it shorter. Just make sure you don't extend it too far because if you go beyond the one-to-one -one playback ratio, you won't actually have enough frames to play back on each frame of your 24p timeline, which means that you'll get stuttering footage. It's like that, it's my, it's my robot. All right, method four, which requires the most effort, but ultimately looks the best, is speed ramping. Speed ramping will allow you to have a more transitional look from going from fast to slow. And it's, it's really for doing that transitional like slowing down like I did with that slap in the beginning. My hand didn't just suddenly go into slow motion. It kind of slowed down, smacked and then sped back up again. So to do this, just bring up the layer's height just so you can see a little bit better. Right click and choose time remapping and then speed. Then find where you want the speed to ramp down and hit P to select the pen tool. Click to drop a keyframe and then get your arrow back with A or V depending on how you have it set up and click and drag the right side of the gray bar down to your preferred speed. And remember your calculations. If you want it to be a one-to-one -one playback ratio, you would need this to be 20% if you're playing back 24p on 120 frames a second clip. However, let's say I wanna go for 40% slower. I'll just drag that down to 40%. Then I'm gonna drag the little bars out. These will be your ramping period. This is where it's gonna start ramping down and finish ramping until it's in full slow-mo. And you can smooth out this ramping by toggling these handles here. Then if or when you wanna ramp it back up, just drop another keyframe using the pen tool again, drag that bar back up, split the handles and smooth out that transition again. And there's a nice ramped slow-mo. And the final tip I have, which is kind of fun, is when you're trying to slow your footage down beyond your available frames. You've got 120 frames a second clip, but you want that to be like a thousand frames a second. For example, this shot of this bike that I got with my drone, it was shot at 60 frames a second. But the thing is that wasn't quite slow enough for me. I really wanted that bike to look like it was just kind of suspended in midair, like moving just fractions at a time. And this was a few years ago. To do that, I had to use Twixter and After Effects and, it works really well, but it's it's a bit of a pain to use. And actually since a few years ago, Premiere Pro have had this feature built in directly. So you can either repeat method two by going Commander Control R to go into your speed settings, or you can do this with speed ramping. But the important thing is to go well below the available frames that you have. So I'm gonna go Commander Control R and I'm gonna, instead of put 20%, I'm gonna put 1%. Now, if I play this back, it's going to be really staggered because there just aren't enough frames available to play that back smoothly. So what you need to do is click down on this menu and enable optical flow. What that's going to do is actually calculate the difference between the available frames to create new frames in the middle. And it doesn't always work very well. Just word of warning, you get some pretty crazy stuff sometimes. The best way to use this effect is when it's a very simple shot, like this for example, would work well because I'm quite pale against a black background, so it's not going to struggle to differentiate what's moving and what's not and what needs to move and what doesn't need to move. But if you're shooting this like hanging from a tree with all the branches and leaves and stuff, it's going to have a hard time. It's really going to struggle because everything's just going to meld together. It doesn't know what you're trying to move where. But when you've done all of that and you hit render because you will need to render this out for it to actually calculate the frames, you get something a little bit like this. All right, I hope you found this useful. Give it a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. It really helps, so please do. Hit that subscribe button to get more videos from me at DoD Media and hit the little little bell there to get notified when I release a new one. Leave a comment in the comment section if you have any questions. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any suggestions as well about how you work with slow-mo, absolutely leave them in the comments, share them for the other viewers. The more knowledge we can spread, the better. Make sure to check out my Instagram at DoD Media for cool stuff. Try to post more on a daily basis as opposed to YouTube where it's just twice a week. And yeah, happy slow-mo. See you later.